Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Ask the Cheese Man, uh, where I answer everybody's questions. Let me just check the health of the stream before we start the show. Where is it? Oh, it says it's good. That's fantastic. Let's let's go. Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, 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 welcome to episode 51 of Ask the Cheese Man, where I answer all of your home cheese making questions, or try to anyway. I don't know all the cheeses on the planet, but I'll give any of your questions a good stab, uh, just from the experience that I've learned during my home cheese making hobby, I suppose. Um, so, uh, a few shout outs this morning before we get going. Um, First off the block, half an hour early, MJ UK. Uh, g'day to Ben. Uh, we've also got Shankle Farm. I can't remember your name, sorry. Um, and of course the uh, the moderator, the lovely Kim. Um, so just a few things to share. Uh, the week this weekend's video going up is going to be feta. Now I know I've done feta a couple of times before. But this is the traditional method. So this is using sheep's milk and goat's milk. So that'll be really good. Um, I'm still developing my raclette. So that should be interesting. I'm going through the maturation now on how to wash it and all that sort of stuff. So I just want to show some of those bits before I release the video. Uh, same on cell is safely wrapped up in foil. Uh, it has gone through its aging period. It's a blue cheese, French blue cheese. Um, from close to the, the Swiss border from France, I believe. And, uh, yeah, so I've, uh, that's matured. And, well, it's it's to the stage where you try and dampen down the uh, the blue mould growth. So I've done that using foil, wrapped that up as per the recipe and popped it back in the cheese cave. Um, and hopefully that's growing uh, veins, the blue veins throughout the cheese. So that'll be really good as well. Um don't forget that during the show, you can do a super chat, a little dollar sign down there uh, in the chat, and all proceeds go to the show and keep it running. Keep the uh, roof over Kim and uh, my head. <laughs> um, and also, and Kim, I just checked how the links are working, and they're the ones to our website, littlegreenworkshops.com.au, you can only put the link to the main page, the home page, all sublinks just aren't working, and I don't know why. I thought I'd fixed it last week. But there is a cheese kit sale uh, going on until Friday. This Friday, 15% off. Um, any international sales technically are kind of like 25% uh, off the mark price because you already get a GST discount, so a goods and services tax that we have to apply here in Australia. Um, so Kim will put the link to the... The website, but not specifically cheese kits because that doesn't work. Um, that will be lovely. Thank you, Kim. All right, so we got some questions, which is fantastic. Um, but before we do, I'll just uh, have a quick shout out to the new patrons this week, and we've had a few, which is very good. Um, let's just have a quick check. Sorry about this. All right, so new patrons this week. Uh, g'day to, where are we up to? Uh, g'day to Annie and uh, Justin. Thank you very much for your patronage. Uh, anybody who wants to support the show ongoing, um, you can go over to patreon.com slash greeningthegavin is the, uh, the name that I registered my uh, Patreon account. But thank you very much for those people who have... Um, pledged uh, ongoing support uh, for the show. So let's move on. We've got lots of questions coming out here. Uh, let me have a look. Yeah. The very first one was way back at 7.30 this morning. Ben said, uh, Gavin, I would like to increase or double a recipe milk quantity. Would it make sense to increase or double the cultures? 
uh, calcium chloride and rennet quantity in equal measures. Yeah, Ben, basically, um, that's what I do. If I get a recipe that says like four gallons of milk or uh, what's that? Four, 18 litres, four, yeah, that's right, yep. Um, then basically what I do, I divide the total um, by the amount of milk and then times it by how many litres I've got and then I do the same formula for all of the other ingredients. Now, the only thing you really half or double is the ingredients list, um, the timings, uh, as far as acidification, renneting, um, pressing weights, uh, and any other timings and temperatures throughout the the recipe should stay the same. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Um, that's certainly the way I do it, and I don't have any troubles anyway. All right, let's have a look. Uh, another question, shout out to Philip, Jet, Martin, Lloyd Rowe, Joy, oh, Joy, hello, hello, and Steve. Michelle, hello to you, Andrew, uh, Michael again, and right, next question is, Steve says, G'day, sir, some of my recent batches have been on the dry side or crumbly. What might cause that? Is there too much rennet? Pressing wrong, thanks in advance. Um, there's probably three things that could go wrong. Uh, you could be stirring a bit too much, um, or you might be cutting the curds too small. That's one way that cheese dries out too rapidly. Uh, and another one, definitely, if you're adding too much rennet, uh, it forces a lot of whey out during the stirring process, um, and it tends, if you use too much rennet, to make the cheese go a little bit bitter on maturation. So you could probably check that. If, it, if it's a little bit too better, bitter, then it's too much rennet. Um, and pressing. If you're pressing it too hard, obviously more whey. The way I press cheese... Um, is that on the first pressing, I press it down enough pressure where the whey doesn't drain cloudy out of the cheese. If it starts to drain cloudy or looks milky, then you're pressing it too hard and too much fat is coming out of the cheese. You don't really want that. Kind of want it to come out clear. And definitely by the second pressing, there shouldn't be uh, very much fat coming out. It should be all locked into the rind that you formed on the first pressing before you've turned it and flipped it. So hopefully that helps. Uh, Michelle says, have you started experimenting with marble cheese? Uh, unfortunately not, Michelle, because I've been on holidays. Uh, when I'm on holidays, I don't do any of the things that I regularly do. Uh, we had family over from Germany, and you would have seen uh, on the weekend's episode, you would have seen my son Adam, who came over from Cologne with his family um, to visit me. Uh, he's my eldest son. Um, we had a great time actually filming that uh, that episode, so that was good fun. But I'll get back into cheese making again. I'm working on making sure the affinage or the maturation of the few cheeses I've got on the go at the moment are being done correctly. Um, when you've what I've come to discover over the last few years is that even though you've got up to the stage where you've got it into the maturation box and stuff like that. Don't neglect it in the cheese fridge um, because half of the cheese making process is the aging part. If you get the aging part wrong, you don't really get the same cheese that you kind of set out to to make. So unfortunately not. I will get there though. Um, Shankel Farm says, should I pasteurize my raw milk in order to make yogurt? Our raw milk yogurt keeps turning up runny. Uh, yes, I, I've um, uh, attempted to make yogurt out of uh, raw milk and definitely in fact the best way to do it is to bring it up to uh, what I have done personally is to boil it boil the milk only for a couple of minutes uh, and then make yogurt out of it and that way you know that all the bacteria are dead uh, and then when you introduce the yogurt bacteria then you usually get a thicker yogurt also here's another tip pop a couple of uh, tablespoons of uh, powdered milk, um, whether it be skim milk, skim powdered milk, or normal full cream powdered milk, pop that into the milk uh, and give that a shake uh, before a good stir before you put in your yogurt culture. Uh, and you tend to find then that your yogurt's a bit thicker. So there you go. Hopefully that helps. Um, thank you for all your videos. They help a lot. I can't translate. 
uh, that. Or maybe I can. Hang on, let's have a look. Google Translate will tell me how to pronounce that. Just one second, ladies and gentlemen. Let's detect the language. Hebrew. Uh, Shalom Ford is the name there. Thank you very much. I couldn't speak Hebrew or read it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Kim's put the link to the shop there. Thank you very much. All righty. Uh, we've got Kim's really having a go there, which is good. Um, where was I up to? Right. Jethead says, cheese link works for me. Um, which cheese link? Go and have a look. Yeah, so that's, I oh know I'm getting a one, I'm getting a 404 error. Maybe it's just me. Um, but yeah, it goes to the website, but I just uh, can't find the, the page. All righty. Uh, MJ say, says, do the sub page have query strings in them? And that might be it. Can you use a URL shortener? I think you're getting a little bit too technical for Kim there, um, uh, MJ. But yes, we probably could use the URL shortener. Uh, and yes, it seems that YouTube are putting strings on the end and that's what's making the website think, hey, that's not quite working. There has been a couple of recent updates to our website, but I do think it's on the YouTube side because all of the links that we try to put up that are associated with our YouTube channel don't seem to be working. Anyway, um, fun edit say, uh, says meow. Well, meow back to you. Uh, Lloyd Rose says... What's your experience with fruity cheeses, i.e. Wensleydales? Have you ever tried them? And if so, do they compare to other cheeses? Love your videos. Um, yes, I've made a Wensleydale before, but the Wensleydale I made had sage in it as a middle layer. Very nice. Um, I have tried fruit cheeses um, using dried fruits. Never use uh, fresh fruit because it rots. Um, during the maturation process. And I tend to find that um, if you use dried fruit that has, and then you rehydrate it a little bit, it doesn't rot within the cheese. I found a lot of those fruit cheeses, what they've done, they've matured the cheese normally, and then they shred it up and then they press um, the fruit back into the cheese and then sell it straight away as a, as a fully mature cheese. Um, I think that's what they do with Wensleydale as well. Uh, the ones I've seen anyway with, say, apricots and cranberries and all that sort of stuff. However, I did make a video on uh, how to make a fresh cheese, which was queso fresco, uh, with cranberries in it. And hopefully Kim will put the link in there and you'll be able to see exactly uh, what's going on there and how to do it. Now, Philip says, how can I reduce the humidity in my cheese fridge? Oh, I always have questions about how to increase the humidity in your cheese fridge. Uh, Philip, if there's any water in there uh, that's collecting, then try and wipe that out or damp it out with a towel or paper towel. Um, that's the only thing I can think of. Uh, if you've got your cheese in uh, plastic tubs like I do or maturation boxes, then just have the litter jar a little bit and you'll find a lot of moisture goes out that way. They're the only things I can... Um, I can think of. Okay. Um, Mossy Rock says, Hi, Gavin. I've got a temperature controller for a cheese cave. How do you control the humidity? Um, kind of like I was just saying, uh, in my cheese cave, and I'm going to do a tour of it this week, um, that I basically use maturation boxes for each individual cheese. There's not a lot of room in the cheese fridge. In fact, there's so much cheese maturing in there at the moment that the, I'm struggling to actually fit any more cheese in there. So I might have to do a few, some fresh cheeses for a while until some of those start to mature. Um, so, yeah, maturation boxes, control the humidity, usually start about 80%. Um, if you put a moist paper towel on the bottom, you can get them up to 90%, no problems at all. I've tested it with a hygrometer, um, which measures humidity. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, um, Elias says, hello, Michael. Don't know who he's talking to there. Soon I'm Gavin. Um, when are you going to make a tofu and vegan cheese, vegetarian cheese? Uh, sometime this year I'll get around to it. Uh, it's on my list of cheeses to do, which is quite long at this stage. Um, so many cheeses, not enough time. 
And then Elias says, is there a substitute for calcium chloride? Uh, yeah, the substitute is to uh, use raw milk um, and hopefully you get a strong enough curd set. Unfortunately, because milk is pasteurised, not unfortunately, a lot of people um, haven't been sick over the last, what, 200 years or whatever it is since pasteurisation was invented. Um, calcium chloride has to be added to pasteurised milk because some of the proteins in the milk get um, destroyed and you need calcium chloride to put a little bit more soluble calcium back into the milk so it will set properly for cheese making. It looks like Carl was mucking around. I don't know what's going on there. Kim has deleted it before I got to see it, so that's good. Um, Shankle Farm says, My mozzarella turned out more dense than store bought. Why? Um, maybe during the, um, if you micro microwaved it, I'm not sure which method you used. If you microwaved it, then if you need it too much, too much moisture comes out. And I found that you get a fairly dense cheese. If you, oh, let me think. So if you're making traditional mozzarella um, and you didn't heat it up enough and haven't stretched it enough, then it becomes too dense as well. Adam says, good morning. Good morning to you, Adam. Uh, I'm so far behind. <laughs> Let's catch up, shall we? All right. Uh, Melissa says, hello from Spring Springfield, Ohio. Um, could you do something on how to make cottage cheese? Mark my words, I've tried a couple of times. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to uh, give that another go this year. Josh D, D says, hi, Gav. Is it possible for you to make stinky f stinky foot cheese? And <laughs> Once again, thanks for all you do for curd nerds. I've made many stinky cheeses, um, not particularly feet ones, but, uh, Josh, yeah. So, um, on our website, on the YouTube channel, we've got um, Munster, we've got Tilsit, um, we've got, what's that other one, Port Salou. So there's uh, three washed rind cheeses that do stink a heck of a lot, uh, but they taste absolutely fantastic. Uh, Josh says, hello, Gavin, I want to ask you about rennet poisoning effect. Is it true that a high amount of rennet can poison someone? Good question. Don't know. Never tried it. Um, no, I didn't know. Um, don't drink your rennet. Okay. Whatever you do. Um, ben says, how do you schedule your going away with your attendance to cheese? Um, funny thing is, Ben, we didn't go away. <laughs> so uh, if I was going away, I wouldn't make, I'd plan it that I wouldn't make cheeses that I would naturally have to ripen. Um, I would then backpack the lot and then they fend for themselves, uh, which they do quite well once they're vacuum-packed. They just break down and uh, and uh, develop as naturally, so no big deal. Joanna, good evening. Uh, Nicholas says, how do you prevent marks from forming on the sides of my cheese wheel? The cloth seems to bunch up, and no matter how much I try to tighten it. Um, yeah, so basically what I do, Nicholas, is when you, when you put the curd in, and you might have seen me do it, I actually pull the cheesecloth down on the side while I've got my hand on the top of the cheese itself, on the curds itself, sorry, on top of the follower, and I'm pulling the cheesecloth down all around. The, look, it's just part of the beautiful part of cheese, just the way it is. They don't have to look perfect. You're the one eating it. Um, it's the final product that counts, I reckon. Uh, but, yeah, sometimes I get lines on the outside of the cheese. It's no big deal. Um, okay. Uh, Shing, Shing is... I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, g'day, sir. If we make camembert with raw milk, how do we make sure there's no nasty bacteria in it? Um, so as I've said many times before, with raw milk, if you're unsure about the quality, then do pasteurisation or therm thermise it. So there is a video on that. Um, Kim can find it, or you can go to the YouTube channel and search for it. Uh, it's called... Uh, how to pasteurize milk for cheese making at home. Um, pretty simple. So go and check that out. That's the best way to do it. Uh, and then introduce the bacteria, starter cultures, and the starter cultures and the molds um, to make that type of cheese, camembert. Uh, Lloyd Rowe, another quick question. Have you ever made 
Buffalo mozzarella. The taste far meatier and tasty. Do you know why it tastes different? Yes, I do. Um, it's because the fat content's different and the proteins in the milk are different as well. And no, I've never been able to get hold of buffalo milk to make buffalo mozzarella, unfortunately. Not a lot of buffaloes here in Australia, except up in the Northern Territory. And I think they've actually uh, got rid of them as a, uh, a introduced species, so they're trying to cull them. Melissa says, how do you make your own pepper jack cheese? Well, um, the recipe is in my cheese making book, Keep Calm and Make Cheese. And uh, the recipe's there. I haven't done a video on it, uh, but all we have to do is follow the Monterey Jack recipe that's on the website on YouTube. And uh, at the time of milling the curds, when you add the salt, you add in some rehydrated chili flakes, and that's how you make pepper jack. Um, but you do actually rehydrate them first. There's a step there. Um, best cheese to go and have a look at how I did that, how to add chili flakes in. There's a queso fresco with chili flakes. Go and check out that video and you'll get the basic idea on how to make Monterey Jack using the Monterey Jack recipe, if that makes sense. I could probably make a Monterey Jack, sorry, a chili or a pepper jack cheese, which is a good one. It's the same cheese as Monterey Jack, except they added chilies to it uh, and the chili water that they boiled the chili flakes in. All right, Adam says, when air drying my first cheddar cracks developed along the curds, will they fill in again in a human maturation box? Um, I've had the same experience uh, because I didn't keep the curds warm enough during pressing, and there are quite chunky blocks that you cut them into after the cheddaring process, I know that. Um, yeah, and if you don't press hard enough, you get those little crack lines. I found that um, I had to vacuum pack the cheese to make those cracks go away, and it actually pressed it again um, just through the vacuum um, seal and how that happened. So that was really good. Uh, you may have to do that, Adam. Uh, sorry, Adam? Yeah, Adam. Um, or you could just wax the cheese now. Uh, probably be the best way to do it. Um, the small wheels are very forgiving, so you can wax them, vac pack them now. Um, don't worry about bringing and make sure if you've got cloth on them, take the cloth off um, before you wax them, or you can wax them with the cloth on. It really doesn't matter, uh, it would be fine. Just make sure you wipe off any funky molds that may have grown on the outside of the cloth if you've cloth banded that cheddar. Nicola says, Do you know how I just how I could discover how strong? My compression spring is, I use it for my cheese press, estimating how much weight is being exerted. Yeah, it's a pretty good way of doing it. What you do is put a scale underneath where you, your cheese basket would normally be, put the spring on top of the scale, and then wind or put apply weight to your, um, to your press. And when it's fully compressed, the scale will tell you how many pounds of pressure is being exerted. Um, that's a very rough way of doing it. There are formulas on how to do it, but that's the way I do it. And that works. Um, Master Oron, Master Oron 5. Um, could you use dry milk to make cheese? I have seen a YouTube video, not, my, not one of mine, but somebody's used powdered milk to make mozzarella, quick mozzarella. Um, so I know it works. I know you can make ricotta out of powdered milk. Um, so they're two that I know of anyway, so you can go and check those out. Trevor says, hey, Gavin, if you've got, if I've got cheddars maturing in the ch cheese fridge, can I reduce the temperature to allow camembert to ripen? And once it's done, raise the temperature back to 12 for the cheddar. Uh, yes, you can, Trevor. That works perfectly well. That's kind of what I do when I'm maturing bloomy rind cheese as I turn the cheese from temperature down. It just slows down the maturation of the other cheeses, but it's only for a few weeks. It's not going to hurt it, especially for the long-aging cheeses. No big deal. It works. Uh, Joseph says lower temperatures like 6 to 7 will stop the cheese. It'll just slow it. That's basically what I just said. Um, Shankle says, is there a cheese I can slice and use for sandwiches without aging it? 
Oh, a good one that Kim and I discovered was Bell Paese. And Bell Paese works like a treat. It tastes really nice. Um, and it doesn't really – you mature it in the fridge, uh, in, the, in the normal kitchen fridge. Uh, and it does absolutely taste amazing. So that is a great slicing cheese that you don't need to age. Another good one, which has a nice cheesy flavour to it, is queso fresco, which is a fresh pressed cheese. You can eat it after six hours straight out of the press. Delightful. Uh, it's better if you put things with it. It's quite bland without that, but that's a really good cheese. Jack says, Mr. Mr. Weber, the man that made cheese interesting and awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. Appreciate it, mate. Uh, Michael says, um, it is an issue when you add website links into chat. YouTube basically adds invisible characters that are end. You can't read, but the computer can, giving errors to the page. Yeah, it used to work, though, Michael. That's one of the things I was trying to mention because within our YouTube account, we've actually told YouTube, this website is okay. It's associated with our channel. And within Google Web Console, I've added all these other sites, and they used to work. It's only until last show, last Wednesday, they stopped working. So, But, yeah, I think you're right. They're doing something on purpose to stop people linking to all sorts of weird things. Okay. Um, where was I up to? Oh, Kim's having a great time here. Sorry, I'm uh, way past. Right, um, Zero says, oh, cool, the tour, tour of your cheese cave. Yeah, it's going to be a video of me sitting on the floor in front of a small fridge. <laughs> it's not going to be as exciting as you think it might be. But anyway, it'll it'll be nice for people to have a look how I might chew my cheese. Okay, uh, Ma Carol, Carol, oh, Carol. Um, hey, Gavin, great videos. Got my hands on some fresh goat's milk. What can you suggest? Uh, first, I'd make some uh, sherve, which is like goat's cre milk cream cheese. Absolutely delicious. An amazing flavour. Try that first off uh, just to get the hang of it. And uh, then the next one I would try would be the Bloomy. Oh, no, that's a bit too technical. It Depends on the stage of your cheese making journey. If you've made a few cheeses, then try Bloomy Goat Blue, which is a recipe I created. Um, or try um, just a goat's milk feta, nice and sharp. Um, there are lots and lots of goat's cheese recipes in the books, the books, uh, the books that I've, I've bought and read through. Uh, there are so many to mention. I probably can't list them all, but. There's a few that I could think of. Try sherve for sure. Um, so simple. Um, and you can actually hang sherve for uh, another 24 hours after it tells you to in the recipe. And you get a, a firmer cheese that's uh, uh, that's a lot harder and you can actually press it. Um, and greetings from Portugal. Greetings back to you. Um, Fun Edit says, does it cost almost twice as much to make mozzarella over storeboard? Uh, no, not really. Um, depends on the mozzarella you buy. If you buy the crappy mozzarella that's been shredded, then it's probably not real mozzarella anyway. Um, it's probably a mixture of cheddar and mozzarella. That's how they do it. Um, or if you buy traditional uh, mozzarella that's been imported from Italy, uh, then that'll be real deal, and you can actually make it fairly cheap. Uh, it only needs, uh, what, four litres of milk if you're going to make quick mozzarella. Very tasty. Um, traditional mozzarella does take a little bit more time. So if you take your time into account, then obviously it's going to take, uh, it's going to cost you more money if you take time into account as money. Um, but anyway, uh, Zero Hedge says, thanks for the heads up about the sale and no GST tax for international buyers. Definitely get in there. There are some cheese kits left. Um, we did sell heaps. So, um, yeah, so any international buyers, you just got to fork out for the shipping, which isn't too bad if you've got a discount like that. So, yeah, you can get into it. Okay. Um, are your books in metric units? Yes, definitely. Keep Karma Mate Cheese has metric and US uh, Imperial, whatever that's called. 
Um, Face Meat says, cheers, Gavin. Are you aware of Raclette? Yes, I've made it already. Um, yeah, you don't need to make a massive big wheel. Um, I've got it maturing, so I'm still filming. It's in production at the moment. So that'll be released in the next three to four weeks, um, Raclette. So there you go. Uh, Melissa says, Gavin, how long have you been making cheese? Uh, I've been making cheese since 2009. So what's that? Uh, nine years? No. Yeah, nine years. Um, so pretty good. And that's all home experience. Um, I have visited dairy processors and stuff to figure out how they do things and try and apply that to the kitchen environment, the home environment. But really, I didn't really ramp up YouTube until ooh, two years ago, maybe two, two years ago that I started getting serious on YouTube. I had a long-running podcast, Cheese Making Podcast, and Little Green Cheese has been going, that one down there, Whoop. Little Green Cheese, that URL, that website's been going for quite a while, um, but I didn't get serious on YouTube until about two years ago. Uh, Pierre says, uh, what do you use as a humidifier, humidifier dehumidifier? Um, I don't have a humidifier in the cheese cave. I just use maturation boxes. As I mentioned before, Kim's timing people out. Wonderful. Thank you, Kim. Um, James says, hi, Gavin. Great content. I'm just wondering, I am nearly 23 years old. What's the chance of me becoming a cheese, a master cheese maker? Is it good business if I got into it? Uh, yeah, France seems to be the place to go to learn. Uh, there's a school for cheese makers and they give you a master cheese maker certificate. Um, definitely, if you you are passionate about making cheese, it's um, I reckon it's a pretty good career to get into. I'm passionate. This is my career, making YouTube videos and cheese. So, uh, yeah, it's doing all right for me. So, yeah, get into it. If you want to go that next step into the dairy industry, give it a go. Okay, uh, Lily says, my mozzarella won't string. What did I do wrong? Uh, probably one of a thousand things, um, Lily. But the one I can think of that comes foremost to mind is that the acidity of the curds wasn't um, high enough. So uh, acidity goes backwards. So it needs to be about 5.0, pH of 5.0 uh, before you can stretch your cheese, between 5.3 and 5, lower the better. Um, that's why it doesn't string. Um uh, so your acidity is not right. Um, depends on what type of cheese you made, though. If it's quick mozzarella, there's a lot of things that go wrong, especially a lot of people don't add enough rennet, uh, so the cheese doesn't uh, form a solid mass and goes all mushy. That happens too. But if you use traditional mozzarella, usually the pH of the curds is not low enough. It's not down to 5.0. Um, Zero Hedge says... I would say go for it, James. Oh, okay. Yep, sorry. All talking talk about it. Uh, I am A.D. Adiski. Hello from Canada. Hello to you. Lloyd Rowe, thanks, thanks a lot. No problems. Um, Joanna, have you ever tried to make a cheddar with Shimani in it to create holes in the cheddar? Uh, no, I haven't. That's a good idea. I should try that. Um it would also taste, it changed the, the flavour as well because propionic shimani tends to impart a nutty flavour into cheese. Uh, but I said, I couldn't see why it wouldn't work. I don't know what kind of cheese it would come out. be a very strong, um, it wouldn't even be an alpine cheese because the curds aren't cooked that high. So something to try anyway. I could call it holy cheddar or something like that. That will be interesting. Thanks very much, um, Joanna, for that suggestion. Um, Matt says, can you make brie without the mould? Mm, yeah, well, yeah, you can make your own mould, but you still need the mould, unfortunately. A mould. Something to hold the curds in while they're mushy. So give that a go. Okay, Nicholas says, I'm working... To develop a, nat uh, develop a natural rind on my Monterey Jack wheel, it keeps developing blue-green mould, no matter how much I brush with brine. Any other tips? 
Uh, yeah, try a little bit of vinegar in the brine. So I make it 50-50. So 50 brine, 50% uh, white vinegar and see if that keeps the uh, blue-green mould at bay. Uh, usually it does. Um, or otherwise, dry salt the cheese again. Leave it out, so out at room temperature for a day after you dry salted it. Increase the salt content. That kind of helps sometimes too. Melissa says, uh, can you make cheese with soy-based milk? Uh, not traditional cheese. It won't set with rennet. Uh, you have to actually use all sorts of weird and funky coagulants to make it into a cheese. Um, in fact, I haven't got it in the background there. Uh, I do have a vegan cheese kit, um, but that's mainly for making nut cheeses, so things that are like cashews and almonds. Uh, and from all reports from people who bought them, I've never tried them, um, they're pretty good. But uh, soy milk basically makes tofu, but you don't add, you can't add rennet to it, unfortunately. It doesn't have the same proteins in it. And it's not technically, technically milk. James says, I'm from Yorkshire, England. So I guess I'm so at zero. Sorry, I've lost the conversation there. Um, Pierre, hey, Gavin. Any idea of when Italian cheese kit will be back in stock? Uh, yes, I put an order for it. It'll be in stock on Monday. So it'll be after the sale, unfortunately. Um, they've shipped it, but it takes about three to four days to get here um, from where I get the supplies. Um, NKY Homesteading, welcome. I'd like to make a Colby Jack mix. Uh, would I need to make both curds at the same time or is there a way to make one and then add the other later? Uh, it's usually best if you make them kind of at the, bake, the same time. You just need to stagger it so you're not stirring the cheeses at the same time. Um, the curds need to be fairly warm, like the, the temperature they just came out of the way, before they'll knit together. Otherwise, you won't get them to press together all right. Um, so hopefully that helps. Uh, the Bearded Walrus. Hi, Gavin. Hello to you, the Bearded Walrus. Um, Matt says, is there any cheese made with cured meat in the cheese? Um, usually, so things like bacon, I think you're referring to. Yeah, they actually mill the cheese after it's matured, add the meat product into it, press it, sell it, put a use-by date of about two weeks on it. That's the only way they can do it. Otherwise, it will rot in the cheese during the maturation process or go rancid. And Dylan says, does the cheddaring process actually affect the final cheese much? Um, it doesn't really look like it does much to the cheese except spell way, uh, which the presses will do anyway. It actually does affect the final texture of those types of cheeses. Uh, it actually makes them a bit drier. Uh, it changes the way it presses. And it does expel more whey, but in a good way. If too many ways there. It, it, uh, let, me, let me work through this. So when you cheddar, it's a harmless form of pressing. So all the liquid that comes out of the cheese, the curds, during the chattering process is clear. So the whey is clear. It reserves all the fat in the, the curds itself. So they stay, that stays there so it can break down later during the maturation process. If you press the curds before you cheddar it, you'll expel a lot of fat out of the curds and the taste will change because that fat's not there to break down later on during the maturation process. Um so, yeah, it would totally change the profile of the cheese if you didn't uh, do the cheddaring process. That's very rudimentary steps, pretty easy. Okay, um, Myri, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, what is the difference between vacuum or wax packing cheese before it goes into the cheese cave? Um, uh, not much, really, uh, these days. And it's only for certain cheeses. Uh, I've lost your comment there, wherever that's gone. It's only for certain cheeses. Uh, Semi-hard and hard cheeses are the only ones that can be vac packed or waxed. So where a recipe says wax your cheese, you can vacuum pack it, basically. Um, it doesn't need oxygen. The cheese doesn't need oxygen to 
um, do its funky work during maturation. What what it's done doesn't need oxygen to do that. Um, doesn't need oxygen to break down the fats and proteins um, into lipids, which give the cheese the flavour. Uh, so you can exclude all the air using vacuum packing. Uh, it's vacuum packing is a lot easier. Uh, it's a little bit more harmful on the environment because you've got a plastic bag you got to dispose of. But they are recyclable. They are uh, usually number two plastic, which is uh, high density polyethylene, uh, so it can be recycled. Uh, cheese making wax can be used over and over and over again, uh, so that's a good um, pro. I should do a little video, I think, on pros and cons of waxing versus waxing versus vac packing. So I could do that. Yeah, thanks. Great idea. All righty. Um, some people are retracting their own comments before Kim gets to them. Uh, James says, what cheese do you advise for a new guy uh, makes for first attempt? James, what I would recommend would be either ricotta or, so that whole meal ricotta or paneer. Two very, very simple cheeses um, that you'll get the hang of it, how to handle milk, that sort of thing. Um, and then move on to something like queso fresco. In fact, there's a whole video on it. Um, probably said it quite a few times before. There's a beginner's cheeses that you can make without a cheese cave. And if Kim can pop the link up, uh, that will be great. It looks like I'm about uh, 20 minutes behind on the comments. Uh, but we'll see how we're going. It says 8.25. I've been going since, oh, 8.41. Jeez, whiz. I am way behind on these comments today. Um, so let's uh, keep going, shall we? Um, uh, zero says, oh, James, I live in the US. Uh, but I would say that if you live in an area of quality milk, just do it. Yeah, correct. Okay. Uh, thanks for the bell, Paisy Kim. Trevor says, you are the curd king. Thanks from Regina S Saskatchewan. I can pronounce that. Um, no problem, Trevor. Um, Elias says, sorry again, I was speaking to Michael when I was typing. Can you make any, can any of your cheese recipes work for goat's milk? Yes. Um, just add 15% less rennet because goat's milk has a higher fat content uh, and usually they'll work out fine. Uh, Tortillas said, thanks for your amazing videos about making cheese from France. Uh, what is your favourite French cheese? Ooh, uh, couldn't go past a nice camembert. Um, that's one, but there's many. I think France has over 250 cheeses. So how can you pick a favourite, honestly? Um, I do like uh, Roquefort, which is absolute and, and real Roquefort. This is made in France, shipped to Australia, Roquefort, made from sheep's milk. Oh, it is absolutely to die for. Um and just tastes amazing. What's another great? Oh, they're just too many. Sorry, too many. Um, but I love them all. Um, am I going to make a recipe for Comte? I uh, don't know the English name. No, that's, that'll do. That's the name we know it by. Um, yes, it's on my list. I'll get to it. Martin says, hi, Gavin. Have you read Edward Trencombe's Nose? It's a novel with many lots of cheesy references. Um, no, I haven't, unfortunately. Sounds like a good book to read. Um, Bastig, is it possible to make cheese from camel's milk? Uh, yes, but only like a yogurt sort of cheese where you curdle the milk and you hang it in a cloth, um, tight weave cloth, and let it go a little bit harder and then you've got a basic yogurt cheese. It doesn't really set well with rennet. Um, Neil says, I gave a made Lester around about a month ago. And I waxed it, and those little mould around the edge where the wax has split. I wash it with brine. Seems okay. Should I re-wax the wheel? Yeah, I would, um, Neil. Or just patch up that area um, that's got the hole in the wax. It's the best way to do it. Um, oops. Where am I? I've lost my place. Something, where is it? Oh, when's the podcast coming back, smiley face? Um, uh, thanks, Steph. Uh, good question. When I get more time, um, I'm actually uh, in the process at the moment of starting up a, uh, a vlog channel uh, called Gavin Webber Vlog. Very original names I come up for things. 
Um, and that's about, uh, well, it's going to be, we're starting this week. Uh, if you search for Gavin Webber vlog, you'll find it somewhere in the YouTubes. And, uh, yeah, it's about our lifestyle, basically. So a bit of cheese making in there, but a bit of lots of every, all sorts of other things, uh, especially some um, some of the lifestyle choices I've made around here. Um, uh, Debbie says, I made your queso fresco and it doesn't melt. No, it doesn't. Queso fresco doesn't melt. Um, and also, cheddar, did I do something wrong? Well, your cheddar should have melted, and I don't know what you've done wrong. Very hard to... Uh, diagnose without some more information. Um, Pierre says, where can I get your maturation boxes? Uh, look, you don't need to specifically use the ones that I sell, but thank you very much for asking. Um, basically, what I would do is try and find any plastic box that has a, a rack in the bottom that elevates the cheese off the bottom of the box uh, or use bamboo mats or what have you, whatever you can get your hands on that can elevate it, but it'll let the cheese drain uh, any way that come any moisture that comes out, it drains to the bottom of the box, but the cheese isn't actually touching it. Um, so there you go. So that helps. Uh, you should be able to search down any sort of plastic box that can do that uh, and become inventive. Just make sure everything's sanitized before you put your cheese in the maturation box. Pardon me. Um, Rick says, uh, What can I do with the whey? Oh my goodness, there's so many things you can do with whey. Um, if you pop on to Here's a tip. Go to littlegreencheese.com and put in the word whey. Uh, you will find that I've written and talked about uh, via my cheese podcast many of the um, things you can do with whey. I think it's about 15 things you can do with whey. There you go. Uh, Jack says, I was given some UHT milk. Anything I can do with it? Uh, you can feed it to your dog. Um, it won't make cheese, unfortunately. Jack, so um, you can make ricotta, but it takes a lot of acid to convert UHT milk into ricotta. Uh, not too much you can do with it there. You can make a nice ricotta salada, but it'd be fairly sour uh, because of all the acid you need. Okay, Andrew says, liquid rennet is not toxic, but will cause gastrointestinal discomfort. It certainly will because it will react with the rennet You've also already got, no, not the rennet, the lacto, lactase that you've already got in the lining of your stomach, which curdles the milk um, and helps you digest milk proteins. Uh, and we've all got a little bit of rennet in our um, stomach lining, just hasn't been bred out of us. Children, babies have a lot more, uh, and it turns the milk into a solid so we can digest it properly. Okay, Andrew says, stinging nettles were used in medieval times to set a curd. Formic acid is organic acid. Yes, that's a great tip. Um, to Cerberos, Cerberos, can you send me some local cheeses in vacuum bags from my country or the customs office? Will they destroy it? Yes, they will destroy it. And no, I won't be able to send you any cheese. I don't sell any cheese, unfortunately, because I don't have a cheese making license per se. Um, where was I up to? Because you have to go through a lot of hoops. Now, where has Kim put that? I'm nearly up to the right time. I'm still eight minutes behind. Um, Joanna, no talking to somebody else. 20 minutes. Yeah, I'm 20 minutes behind. Um, Carrier. Carrier. Oh, I can't pronounce the name. Sorry. Um, please try to find a good recipe for ricotta scanty, ricotta forte. It's a cheese made in... Uh, Paglia, uh, Italy. Uh, I will have a look. Um, Myra says, Can you vacuum cheddar instead of cloth banding? Yes, you can. Um, really need to learn how to do it. Yes, okay. Kim, thanks for the link. Uh, can, yes, we can vacuum pack cheddar. Um, Nicholas, how often do you go through cheese cloths? Uh, depends on how often you use them. I usually about 10 washes and then I throw them away because they start getting holes in them uh, and that's no good for anybody, which curds go down the wrong hole. Um, yeah, usually about 10 washes and they, they start to fray and all that sort of stuff. So then I just uh, get a new one. Uh, Neil says, can you recycle cheese wax? Most definitely. If you get, there's a video that I've created 
um, that you can see how I recycle cheese wax. Uh, I think it's melting, uh, what is it, waxing cheese, uh, using a cheese bowl or something. But yeah, you can use it over and over again. All we make, all we make sure is wash off any residual cheese that's uh, on the, stuck on the wax with just um, hot soapy water. Uh, don't make it too hot because the cheese gets very pliable uh, and uh, it'll stick to your fingers and all that sort of stuff. And then just uh, pop it back into your waxing bowl, melt it down the next batch. There you go. Um, Debbie says thanks for your guidance. I've made most of your cheeses. And you're an awesome teacher. Thank you, Debbie. Appreciate it. Um, unfortunately, I can't speak Arabic. Um, we'll try to translate that, shall we? Hopefully it's not naughty. Let's... Uh... Uh, it just says Arab translation. <laughs> That's excellent. Um I do have Arab translations for most of the titles, but certainly not the. Uh, I don't have closed captions because it costs money to get to make closed captions. Um, or there are. I put a link on every YouTube video. Uh, if anybody's interested in translating any of the videos into their native language, if they're a bilingual speaker, then feel free to um, add captions in your native language. There's a link in every video in the description on how to add those captions or how to translate the titles into um, your language. And that's always a great help, especially to reach a wider audience um, of non-English speaking people. Okay, uh, Pierre, my main concern is the humidity in the cheese cave. Have a plastic box to put the cheese in is the solution. Yes, it does. It works because it traps the moisture in from the cheese itself. Because as the cheese dries, obviously it expels moisture and that stays in the in the cheese box and that creates humidity, yada, yada, yada. You can figure that out. So that works. Um, okay. I'm way, 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 way. Um, I or, uh, did you do a Derby cheese recipe? Yes, I did. There was a sage Derby. So just omit the sage and you got a Derby. Um, so... Yeah, there is a recipe. Just do a search on the uh, main channel page. How does how actually how to control the humidity in the cheese fridge itself? Um, a lot of people who have bigger fridges buy a humidifier, um, but you've got to keep filling up the water reservoir for that quite often, uh, at least once a week, uh, to get it up to the right humidity. If you're going to just make natural cheeses without maturation boxes and stuff like that. Um, Valestin says, in your quick mozzarella video, if you press an age it, what would it become? Uh, nothing. It, it's too it's too soft to press quick mozzarella. Normal mozzarella, if you age that, it's kind of like provolone. Uh, so, or scumorza is the other name. So they're aged um, pasta filata cheeses. So, yeah, I hope that helps. Anyway, I'll keep going. I'm running out of time and got so many questions. Um, are there any colorings in your videos necessary for flavor or they're just color? Uh, Anato just colors, no flavor at all. Um, uh, no, you read it wrong. I want to send you cheese. Oh, okay. No, that'll probably get uh, confiscated, unfortunately. Customs are very strict here on what you can Import uh, and well, definitely import into Australia. So sorry about that. Um, uh, do you know Epois or Ep Epi Epois? I think that's how you pronounce it. It's delicious French cheese from Burgundy. You should try it. Apparently, it stinks to high heaven. But uh, yeah, um, MJ UK says you can get a Chrome extension that lets you translate in a click. Yeah, that would be good. I, I reckon I'd better install that because I'm just... Oh, I'm nearly there. Okay. Um, Joanna says... Oh, yes. Australia does have some of the most important... stringent importing laws. Uh, very protective, yes. Um, MJUK, do you need English captions? Uh, if it's no trouble, that would be lovely. But uh, Google... Does, 
Google, uh, sorry, uh, YouTube, owned by Google, owned by Alphabet Company, um, do put English captions in there automatically, but because they can't understand my Australian accent, they put some funny words in there, I tell you. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've been, some people have sent me emails with, hey, check out timestamp, whatever the number is, and tra auto-translate. And, oh, some of the work, it's very funny. Uh, it's almost as good as bad lip reading. <laughs> um, yes, Kim's having a chat there with um, Cerberus. Uh, MJ says, I can't even post crafts made of wood, wood roving, wool roving into Australia. Yes, they won't even let you do that because the wool industry. Thanks, Kim, for that uh, link. Pierre says, uh, yeah, I'd rather use a box to mature cheese. So we get the community asked when putting the cheese in the box, the 65%. Uh, yes, so if you it, normally it'll it'll probably go up to about ninety percent humidity in the box itself. If you want it down to eighty, then just lift the lid a little bit on the corner, uh, and that makes it go down to about eighty percent. Um, usually, most cheeses are above eighty percent humidity, so they don't dry out and crack. Um, uh, Jay Walker, I have a fridge I use for sausage making. That is the temp and humidity control. Can I use it for can I use a maturation box or just a plate to catch liquids? Um, can I use a maturation? Yeah, you can use a maturation box in there, but you can actually put it on a rack. That'd be better. Uh, but remembering that when you make sausages like dried cured sausages, they usually get penicillium candidum on the outside, the white mold or penicillium camberti. Uh, that may get, jump across to your cheese as well. But there's no reason you can't mature cheese in the same uh, fridge as uh, any cured sausages. In fact, I think they do in Italy. Um, Andrew says, do you reserve your cheesecloths, uh, e.g. propionic for those that only need it, uh, penicillin ricordi for blue? I, no. Uh, no, I don't. Because uh, what I do, I wash them in the washing machine, uh, a bit of vinegar in the final rinse, and then before I use them in the next batch of cheese making, I boil them. So all those molds and uh, bacteria are all destroyed and you can safely use them for the next cheese. So no, I don't have a bag for one different type that I've used. So that's how you do it. So make sure you boil a cheesecloth when you sanitise all your equipment before the next uh, uh, the next uh, cheese making session. Uh, Carol says, hi, Carol. Um no, Carol says, hi, <laughs> Gavin and Kim. Um, I've been busy since last weekend. I made Budakaza and Havati and the Budakaza drying as we speak. Love the ebook. No problems at all, Carol. Glad you bought it. Um, and lovely to have a chat with you. I think it was on Facebook as well. Uh, MJ, I've got an experience in subtitling. I'll do some for you. My way of contributing. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, Let's see if I can't translate some of this Arabic and see if we can get a question out of it. Um, um, okay. Uh, thank you for the beautiful effort. Yaret taught us how to make work White City Syrian cheese reduced in salt water for a whole year. That sounds like a very interesting cheese. Um yeah, if you have a recipe, I would love to have it. Even if it's in Arabic, I'll translate it. Um, just go to littlegreencheese.com or the YouTube About page, the emails there, or the little box to send the thing. Um, that would be lovely. Um, uh, Shad says, can you explain by what you mean a cheese fridge? Um, yeah, basically what it is is, and we haven't got much time left, I think we've got one minute, uh, is it's a bar fridge. Normal refrigerator that works at 4 degrees Celsius, uh, 39 Fahrenheit. And I've got an external thermostat with a probe going inside the fridge. And I set the external thermostat to uh, between 12 and 13 degrees Celsius for most cheeses. And that maintains the temperature. It turns the fridge on and off to the required temperature. So you don't have to rely on the external, uh, the internal thermostat of the fridge. Works very well. Okay, Carol says, by the way, my chooks 
Really like unsalted whey off the Havarti, sport little devils. Yes, my chooks get some whey occasionally as well. Don't give them too much, but uh, they do like it. Um, Jeffrey said, just here to wish you a good day. Good day, Jeffrey. Now, um, that's, I think, yeah, we've hit the one hour mark. Don't forget that you can super chat before I head off. But uh, thanks, everybody, for your participation today. It's been fantastic. I don't know what the peak uh, stream peak, 59, 61 people were watching the show today. So that's fantastic. Really appreciated everybody turning up and asking me lots of questions, or it wouldn't be Ask the Cheese Man without questions. It'd just be me sitting here talking to my crocodile up there. So, no, that'd be it's fantastic. Don't forget that you can support the show via Patreon. Kim will pop the link in there somewhere. Um, and don't forget that I'm starting a new YouTube channel, uh, which is going to be called Gavin Webber Vlog. Very original, I know. Uh, and it's about our lifestyle. If you want to check that out, um, Kim won't put the link in, but uh, we'll figure out um, how to do all that. Uh, I'll put it in the next video or something like that. Uh, link to that. Um, also, don't forget the uh, the podcast. You, know, you can find that at littlegreencheese.com. Uh, there's about 64 or 65 episodes. I am hoping to get some time to do some more. Kim's put the link there for the merch store. Thank you, Kim. Uh, and don't forget that we've got a 15% uh, off cheese kit sale over at littlegreenworkshops.com.au. And uh, if you're international, effectively, you get a 25% discount because you already get a 10% uh, sales tax discount on the prices that are available, that are shown on the store. So that's all fantastic. Get stuck into that while stocks last. Uh, and I'll be taking the discount off on um, Friday midnight, my time, which will be Thursday sometime in the US. Uh, so get in quick. Um, Kim's, oh, she's put the link there for Gavin's vlog. There are about 10 videos there already, but they're quite old, but they kind of show the stuff that we're doing around here. Anyway, thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Appreciate your time and thank you so much for the questions. Uh, we'll be here again, same time, same channel, uh, next week, next Wednesday at 8 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Daylight Time, which is GMT plus 11, in case you've just come along and uh, and seen it. All right, we'll see you. Goodbye, Curd Nerds. We'll see you next week. Well, g'day, Curd Nerds. G'day, Curd Nerds. Well, g'day, Curd Nerds. Well, g'day, Curd Nerds. Well, g'day, Curd Nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds.